Mr. Terry Purcell, and it's great to have you back here at Sherwood New Life. We're so glad that you're here. And right now, as I am taping this, it is a blustery, rainy, nasty day. And so I hope it goes away soon. And by the time that you are watching this, maybe we'll have some sunshine or at least uh, just some not so cold and not so wet weather. So I want to get right into what we are going to start today. So let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. Your word, it comforts us and it tells us what is going to happen in our future. And um, just enough to let us know what it is and enough to give us peace and trust in you. I pray that your word will come forth this, forth this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we are starting a new series, and it's going to have kind of a, a little bit of a bumpy start because we are going to have this week, and then we're going to have another special speaker next week, and then I'll come back the following week, and we've got Easter in there, so just hang in with us. But we are going to be starting this series on Revelation. And uh, let me just remind you of our three focuses for this year for our church that I told you back in January. The first one is um, Bible engagement, getting to know your Bible, spending time with your Bible, spending time reading your Bible, knowing how to understand it, how to read it, how, how to study it. And then... Um, Another one is that we are um, getting to know how to love those in the Portland area and um, in our area um, who don't believe the same way that we do. How, how to dialogue with them, be friends with them, walk beside them, show them the love of Jesus. And then the third one is to know what the Bible says about future times, about the end times, about the times that we are living in, and what God's word says about that. And so today we are starting on um, a series on the book of Revelation. And it's going to take, um, I would imagine, I would say, all of this year, maybe even into next year. And we're going to take some breaks here and there. And um, um, But overall, we're going to be looking at the book of Revelation and we're going to take it bit by bit. And so today we have, we're just doing an introduction. We're doing an introduction to the book of Revelation. Back in the 70s, when I was growing up, there was a song by a um, an artist, uh, a singer um, named Larry Norman. And Larry Norman, I thought he was such an interesting person from what I could see. And um, he had very, very long, very, very blonde hair. And um, he, he kind of... Um, he kind of made the church people bristle a bit because he was a little bit out there. He said what he thought and he had some definite opinions, um, but his music was so inspired and made us think. And one of the songs that he had was um, called, I Wish We'd All Been Ready. And it was very it was one of my favorite songs, but it was a very haunting song. And it was a very, um, well, you could say it was a very depressing song because it was a, it had to do with what we call the rapture and, and how when Jesus comes to gather up his church and, and um, those who were left behind, that is who he's talking about in this song. I wish we'd all been ready. And... While it was a sad song, I really liked that song, and it really reminded me the urgency of um, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, now fast forward to today, where I'm finding out that a lot of people who heard that song and who um, grew up during this time, they were very fearful because of, of this song, um, very 
fearful because of a, a movie that came out, came out that um, many churches showed called A Thief in the Night. And uh, yes, it made you think, but it never, I never had a lot of fear because of it, because I knew Jesus Christ as my Savior. And it was presented to me as this is a this is a dramatization of what we think might happen, um, but I was never made to fear. But I'm finding out that many people were afraid of that, and they were afraid of the rapture, and they were afraid of end times teachings. And I'm realizing today that the enemy has truly used what Jesus meant to provide peace for us. And that is the book of Revelation. Yes, we will see. There are some things in this book that are, are, are they're just crazy bizarre. And, um, and, and things that, that should scare us. But it wasn't meant to scare us. It was meant to give us some insight for what is to come. But it was also meant to bring us peace. And so I want to say right up front that my prayer for you is that as we go through this book, you're not afraid of what we look at. Please, please do not be afraid. And when you start feeling fear, know that is from the enemy. The word of God should not bring fear to your heart. In fact, the Bible says that fear is from Satan, our enemy, and he is very real and his attacks are very real. So please, as we enter into the study, please do not be afraid. Revelation 1.3 says that if you read these words, if you read this book of Revelation, there is a special blessing for you. If you read these words and you heed them, there's a special blessing for you. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. That is, it is the only book that has this special blessing. And so we can take that um, as, as direction for us to, to study this, to study this, this book and, um, and to heed its words. And so I want today to be an introduction into the book, and I want to make clear some things about this book. Now, some people have called this the apocalypse, um, uh, that Revelation is the apocalypse. Now, yes, um, but... In English, we have made the, the word apocalypse to mean the end of time, uh, the end of days. It's the end of history, the end of the world. But the word um, in the Greek, apocalypsis, actually means revelation, a revelation, not an end, but a revelation of something that was previously hidden. And... Um, if this isn't something new. It's not like God has a new plan that he just came up with. No, it's been the plan all along. It's just now being revealed. And so, uh, so revelation, revelation doesn't necessarily mean that it is the end of, of everything. It means it's, it, it's a revealing of something that was previously hidden. And so, um, just want to set that straight, and 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 so that you know that that's the that's the meaning of the word revelation, apocalypsis. Now, there are several ways of interpreting that have historically been um, how this book has been interpreted. And so I just want to quickly go over those so that you understand this and so that you know where some of the contradiction of interpre interpretation comes from. Number one, it's, it's an allegory. 
Um, everything that you read in this book is not to be taken literally. It is simply an allegory or a symbolic pres uh, representation of, of um, some ideas. And so um, it's, it's not to be taken literally. It's not about the future. Um, it's just simply a, a tale or a parable, some would say, um, that is completely and only symbolic. As an Assemblies of God church, and um, for me personally, I do not adhere to this um, interpretation. And so let's go on to the second one. The second way of interpreting this is that it's all spiritual. It's not to be taken literal. It is all spiritual. It is all, it's part allegory, and it is simply um, a way of looking at, um, at this book, um, is that it's just our spiritual states. Well, there's not much evidence of that, and, um, and, and we interpret the rest of the Bible literally, and so we don't adhere to this um, method of interpretation. The other, um, the third one, is that it is historical. It has all already happened. At the time that it was written, it was, um, it was prophetic, but that all of this has already taken place Everything has been fulfilled, and it has all taken place um, by 70 AD. Now, we're going to get into that date here in just a moment and why it's important. Um, but then the fourth one, and this is the one that, um, that we adhere to and that I adhere to. And by we, I mean our church and um, our denomination of the Assemblies of God. This is what we adhere to, and that is a futurist interpretation of the book of Revelation. And we could also call this a literal um, interpretation of the book of Revelation. This is our approach. This is the approach that I'm going to take in the study of the book of Revelation. We are going to look at it literally. It will never be symbolic or allegorical or spiritual or hysteric hysterical, not hysterical, historical, unless it specifically says it or makes it clear that that is how we are supposed to take it. We are looking at it as if most of it has not taken place yet. And we are going to look at it in terms of other places in, in, uh, in Scripture um, that we can take from that, that, um, that go together. The book of Daniel, the book of Isaiah, the book of Zechariah, the book of Joel, the book of Matthew, um, and, and so forth. First uh, Thessalonians. And, and we'll see how all of it works together. And so it's not just a figment of somebody's imagination. And so um, we're going to come back to this as I explain some things here. All right. So the author of this book is John. And this is John the Apostle, not to be um, confused with John the Baptist. And um, it's John... Uh, the apostle. It is written on the island of Patmos. And this is important, and I'm sorry I'm going to be speaking fast because I, I want to have time to get everything in here. Um, but this is very important. The island of Patmos was used by the Roman um, government for uh, exile. If you were a political prisoner, that is where you were exiled to, is the island of Patmos. And, um, and it was pretty much just a vol volcanic rock. And um, this is where John, uh, the Apostle John, was banished to by Domitian, um, the Emperor Domitian. And so we're going to look at this, at the date. And this is, this is where um, the importance between the historical and the futurist um, interpretation comes in. And we believe that this book was written in 95 AD. 
And historically, um, it is believed that John was, um, was banished to the island of Patmos, that he spent um, several years there, and at the death of Domitian in, 95, in 96 AD, he was then released from the island of Patmos. Um, because of this, be, because of that date of 95 AD, what he wrote could not have been fulfilled in 70 AD. Otherwise, he would simply be making a report of what has already happened. So those who take a historical um, view of the book of Revelation, they are looking at an earlier date of 65 AD. Now, there are several reasons for this, um, why this just doesn't work. There are other apostles that were executed by Nero, and that was Nero's um, preferred punishment is execution. Now, if it had been 65 AD when John wrote this, when he received this vision, why would Nero um, execute the others and banish John to Patmos? That doesn't make sense. Um, in 95 AD, um, it was Domitian who was who was in power. He was the emperor, and banishment was his favorite um, way of punishment. And and banishing John to the island of Patmos makes sense. Now there are other things that. Um, there are other uh, reasons, uh, um, many of them that, that uh, you know, tip the scales in favor of a 95 AD and a futurist look at the book of, of Revelation. And one of those is that um, while you could maybe look at uh, the events of 70 AD, which was when the Roman government came in and just destroyed Jerusalem. They destroyed, they burned down the temple. They, um, they did away with everything. They dispersed the Jews. Um, and, and that was the end of, of, the, uh, of the nation of Israel until, until 1948, when they were miraculously um, became a, a nation again in one day, just as scripture said they would. But um, not everything that happened in 70 AD fulfills what is in the book of Revelation. It just doesn't. Now, some of you may say, if, if you're you know, this is kind of, you know, your belief and, and this is your thing. You might say, well, Josephus, um, the, what Josephus wrote was, was horrible. And I'm not disagreeing that it was horrible, but we have to remember that Josephus also had a tendency to, um, oh, what's the word I want? He, he kind of, um, he wanted to make it a little more dramatic. He dramatized things a, a bit, and um, and some and it it just doesn't fit that the events of 70 A.D. would um, would fulfill everything in the Book of Revelation. And so we are moving forward as Revelation is the future that has not been take not has take has not taken place yet. And, um, and also one more thing I want to point out is that, um, and we'll talk about this more, but what we see in scripture is that there is an event, what we call a foreshadowing, a, a, an event that may fulfill partially, but doesn't fulfill completely a prophecy. And we can look at AD, uh, the 70 AD and see that that could, it, that it is a foreshadowing of the events that are to come for the book of Revelation. I'm running out of time here, but I want to, um, I want to encourage you to return as we look at this book in, in future weeks. We're going to be looking at the role of Israel. We're going to be looking at um, uh, 
at the, the rapture, the millennium, heaven, the second coming of Jesus Christ. But there's more to this book. We're going to be looking at what it has to say about who Jesus is and his attributes. We're going to be looking at um, praise and worship in the book of Revelation and glimpses of heaven. But don't be afraid. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this book that you have given us. I pray, Lord, that we will not be in fear, but we will look joyfully to what you have given us and what we can see in the future. Give us peace, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Have a great week. You can go to to, uh, SherwoodNewLife.org if you'd like to pay your tithes and offerings, give to our missions. Have a great week. We love you here.